Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to start now, starting from top, because I've got Chris Brown, Coach Chris Brown, and this is Chris Brown with an E. Let's get that right, with an E, okay? Not Chris Brown, Coach Chris Brown with an E. Am I correct, sir? You are right, Chris Brown with an E. Thank you very much, sir, boy. Thank you for having me. <laughs> well, well, listen, well, listen ladies, yeah. I've, been, I've been talking about this, this topic for a while um, with my regular uh, discussions on... Um, quarantine, COVID, COVID-19, which is the big talk around. Mental health is one of the key things. And to, and this week is mental health week. So I said, let me get into this particular topic because there's so many different persons that can talk about mental health, but also I wanted someone also who can talk about mental health, but also to give some tools so one can feel fired up and one can get going. And I thought as much the best person would be Chris Brown, and one of the things that many people are actually going through now, and the question many people are asking themselves, and many people are so dealing with this is, are you finding it mentally challenging to cope with self-isolation, to cope with this lockdown? Is the word lockdown having an effect? Is isolation having an effect? Social distancing, these terminologies. So therefore we want to sort of break it down as much as possible today and to get some key points from Coach Chris Brown, so therefore we can actually navigate it and people can leave. And, you know, whenever the government is ready for people to go back to work or whatever like that, it, it will mean nothing to them. Now, Chris Brown, Coach Chris Brown, and I'll give a, a background between Coach Chris Brown. Um, uh, he has a passion to help others overcome their blocks in life, especially in their careers and social life. Passion comes from his own experience of challenging challenges that he has overcome and uh, realization that this is transferable to many other challenges we all have to deal with in life and work. Um, he's also a resident coach who appears weekly on Sky TV, Chris Brown, uh, UK first number one mental health show. There's so much more about Chris Brown. And if I have to go through this, um, I think the show would have been exhausted by the time we get around the records. Okay. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but also something else I must say though, Chris has been um, a few years ago, um, we, we did a Valentine special and it was a Valentine special with Brown, Chris Brown with an E. And uh, we, we had a good show a couple of years ago, right, Chris? <laughs> yeah, we, did, we did. We had fun on that as well. A lot of information passed. <laughs> yes. So firstly, welcome, sir. And thank you so much for coming on. And uh, tell me now, how are you? And this will I'm very us. well. And first of all, let me say thank you very much for having me on. It's a pleasure to be able to share this information. And I can say I'm doing quite well at this time. But one yeah. thing I'd like to underline is for everybody is that, um, one, I'm not a doctor and I'm not a psychologist. I am a yeah. coach, which deals with areas of mental health as well. Okay. And, and the most important thing is that you're Brown, Chris Brown with an E, Coach Chris Brown, yes? I am Coach Chris Brown. With an E, with an E in it. You know, um, I've always had this thing, you know, where in media it's got Chris Brown. And I always say, yeah. well, the guy running around, dancing and, you know, doing his thing, same as me. But, hey, had to separate it. Coach Chris Brown. Brown with an E at the end. Yeah. Well, let's get straight into it. Um, sure. Regarding um, COVID-19 and regarding what is happening around us, and this is not something which is confined only to the UK where we're in. It is happening in Jamaica, it's happening in the States. It's happening worldwide now, whereby this pandemic, this COVID, uh, yesterday I was having a discussion with the doctor. We say it's a, it's a rebellious um, virus, or it's an undercover, under, undercover virus or something, because it is operating differently from others, where it can lock down a country and isolate yeah. people special social distancing so chris what what is it that you can bring to the table now as to how people can go through this when people are saying mentally are, are they feeling mentally restricted by the lockdown you know is there anything well, good that can come out of lockdown i want you to go with it chris well so on. that's that's a really big question there's quite a few answers in there um which i'll uh actually expand on um first of all you just mentioned the word lockdown um let's yeah. break that down because we deal with things in different ways and, and words are very powerful they're very yeah. powerful now think about this uh once upon a time let's say seven eight weeks back everybody was going about their own business yes. uh going to work popping home going to the shops meeting up with family then all of a sudden there's this talk about this thing that might happen which yeah. is self-isolation. 
okay, self-isolation, we know it's for good. So what do we do? It's empowering because it's self, self-isolation. Now, let's say this, a few days after, a week after, they say lockdown. Yes. Now, that word lockdown doesn't sound like much choice. It sounds very restricting. It sounds like you have no space in there, you're held back, and you're locked down. Yes. Now, in taking it in that level, you've got to take about it. We're in the week of uh, mental health week, right? And for somebody who is quite restricted or, say, feeling claustrophobic or, you know, has high anxiety when they don't see anybody, that sounds pretty, you know, drastic. Yes. And it seems drastic, but the thing about it is self-isolation, lockdown, one thing, no matter what I say throughout this day, you've got to remember it is for our own good. That is a fact. It is for our own good. So it's not such a um, demonized word like lockdown at the end of the day. It's what we do with it, how we embrace that word in itself. Yes. Now, you said also, could anything good come out of it? Now, to be honest, there are quite a number of good things that actually has come out of this, but we have to look at it in a microscopic way as well. Yes. One, <clears throat> let's talk about family. People are spending more time with their family now than they ever did before. They're getting to know even their own children, their husband, their wives, you know, the relatives they're with. You know, they're getting to know them on different levels because we are in a society where we're so fast moving, always on the move. We're always doing this. We're grabbing a cup before we're going out of the house. We're doing this. See you later. Pop, bye. Da, da, da. Yes. Now we've got to stay at home and we get to know you know, what the children are thinking, what the family's thinking, how they're communicating. All these things are quite good. Now let's look at it another way. It's all about value. Yes. We learn what to value and what not to value. Look at this. I mean, let's talk about the whole money thing. Just at the beginning of lockdown, we saw the shop shelves empty. Toilet yeah. rolls are gone. Let me tell you, at that time, if somebody offered you a Ferrari car or a toilet roll, you probably grab the toilet roll at the time instead, yeah. right? Okay? Because that was a demand, a need. But I'm only joking here, but think about this. The value of a lot of things, the value of people, the value of life, the value of the stillness that's happening and getting back to who you really are. It makes a difference. And, and, and tell me, so, so have you cracked the whole toilet roll fiasco? Which was at me. <laughs> you know, I was wondering about that, to be honest. You know, I just couldn't work out why was that the top of the list, you know. But then I thought about it as well, because after that went, I realized uh, my wife and myself were shopping one time and there was a period where there was toilet rolls were in abundance. But guess what? There were no eggs in the supermarket. Yes. All right. That stopped, you know. After the eggs, it seemed like there was no flour. And I started wondering. I was wondering... I don't really believe that everybody just ran out and said, mm. let's go and buy all the eggs now because the eggs might go, or let's go and buy all the flour, you know, let's, let's start baking. I don't believe that. Yes. My thinking, I'm not saying it's actually so, but I wonder, was it a bit of a held back and demand and, you know, it boosts, you know, certain areas for businesses and all that at the same time. But I'm not accusing them of that. I'm just saying it's just kind of really strange, you mm. know, if you think about it. So, so tell me now, um, what are some of the key tips that you would sort of have in mind because there's a mental health factor, there's a right. psychological factor. And um, what would you say are, are the key tips that you would talk about on this particular thing, Chris? Well, okay, um, let's think about this. I mean, from the beginning, we start off the get go, we're talking about being able to actually handle um, lockdown. Like say we're in a period of a uh, mental health week and it's, it's very important that we understand ourselves and understand others as well now yeah. when i say understand ourselves we might not actually be able to actually handle what's going on and in in the initial beginning it's very hard after a while let's say it takes three weeks to break to make a habit or break habit three weeks yeah. in we kind of settle and we get a little bit used to it in a funny sort of way that yeah. it's going to be a little bit of a shift for people and business to actually go back but while in this time, I'm not going to jump too far. Let's talk about 
actually handling it right now. Now, I'm going to give you some um, a little few tips. Yes. Which um, should help, and I hope it helps the individuals or viewers listening right now. Yes. Now, these tips I spoke about many times and have had many results from this. And the first one I'd like to talk about, a tip that really helps in this time of lockdown, is your physical health and your mental health. Yes. Physical right. health, now, health, yes. Yes. Now, your physical health and your mental health, I'll put it this way, goes together hand in glove. It is really important that um, you get into either a routine of doing some sort of exercise. Now, somebody might say, well, look, um, you don't know my situation. I can't actually exercise. But let me tell you something. You can do just a little bit, even if it's 15 minutes, uh, half an hour, or if you're really fit, you know, go for, a, you know, 45 minutes or an hour. Because if you think about this, picture this, the average person who is a sort of get up and go, and they get up in the morning and they go and hit the gym before they go to work. Those people, when they get to work, they tend to be the sort of people who are very uh, positive. They interact with others. They're, they're sparking in the meetings. They know what they're saying. They're talking about and they're ready to go. They sort of hello people everywhere they go. But the reason why that is happening, let's go back to this. You talk about signs of clear up. It's because they started their morning already and their endorphins are pumping, which is sending a lot of blood to the brain, which is yeah. helping them be able to cope with stress and different situations. So yeah. a little bit of exercise at this time, this period, or get into a routine of it each day or each and every other day actually makes a difference to how you actually handle this. Yeah. And it's my advice, I'd say on this is, look, get into a routine of exercise. No matter how small it is, just get into a routine of exercise in one way or another. But even before I say that, check with your doctor that you're healthy enough to do that, okay? So so by, by doing so, what you're doing, you're getting into a sort of routine, taking away from the present scenario to a certain extent, like in sort of coping mechanism, Chris? Well, it is a coping mechanism. It's something that triggers off in our mind as well. Um, when you are, let's say, as I mentioned, those endorphins going, you are less stressed. People who tend to exercise are less stressed than the average person who doesn't exercise at all. Now, in saying that, I'm not saying stress, every kind of stress has to just disappear. We're not going to do the Peter Pan thing here because sometimes a little bit of stress is actually really good for you, yeah. you know, because it gets you going. But it's when it's prolonged stress, de-stress, we're in trouble then. So we've got to do something to, you know, balance up, you know, who we are, where we are, and how to handle the stresses. I was at one point looking behind me. I wanted to look behind me yeah. to see if if it was me you're, you're talking to or so <laughs> I, do, I do recall i do recall once a doctor said to me are you exercising enough i said yes i actually walk to the car and back and go to lunch and back she said no no you've got to this is what she said you've got to make up your mind to do it is a difference you you might you might end up doing the same physical things but i think what she was saying is that you've got to also purpose in your mind to do it is that correct in a certain way yes <laughs> That is correct. You've got to say, yes, I'm going to do it. And if you could um, weigh up and balance out the pros and the cons of it, honestly, there's a lot of pros. And I'll say, just do it, you know, just do it. Don't think right. about it too long. If you think about it too long, you start thinking about why you shouldn't. Just think yeah. of reasons why you should. Right. So that's one of the that's one of the first points. OK, fantastic. That's one of the first, yeah. Coach, yes. And, yeah. and next. OK. Now, uh, another point I'd say, jot these down. Jot these tips down as well. Yeah. They are going to make a difference. And if you pick out the ones that exactly applies to you, let's talk about anxiety. Anxiety. Mm -hmm. What is anxiety? Anxiety is when your mind starts to race ahead of you and to the point of feeling very worried because you're concerned about the outcome. Right. But the thing about it, um, let me explain it another way. We start to think about something when a situation happens. Yes. So it's like watching a film. And this horror film that you play out in your head has a negative ending, but you haven't seen the ending yet. So what happens? You think of all the drastic endings. Now, the brain itself 
cannot work out what's real and what's not real. So what happens is you get a little bit of a, let's say, um, heart palpitations, uh, yes. sweating, you get breathless, and you feel like you're out of control. Now, think about that. If that's what's happening to you then, we actually built up into that anxiety. Sometimes we have mild anxieties, and some people actually want to put themselves in that place. Sounds strange, but just bear with me. Think about this. Yeah. It's a Friday night, and you sit there and you watch some horror film, uh, Walking Dead, whatever, yeah, and or somebody is in a creaky house, and these zombies or whoever is or vampires, whatever, is going to kill them, and they're running around the house. The purge, like the purge, yes. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> hey, what's <you? laughs> right? So the thing about it is, you switch off. You unplug TV at night. You're going up to your bedroom in the house or across the floor, or whatever. And you hear one little creak. And what do you do? You look behind you. You look over there. But come on. Before you saw that film, everything was okay. All yeah. those creaks, but your brain starts sending messages. Guess what's happening? The anxiety, the mild anxiety is kicking in already. So how do we handle that? What I'll say is this. Look, be in the moment. You begin to have that anxiety attack. Be in the moment. Now, yeah. in this time of lockdown, I'm going to say this again. Be in the moment. In the the moment. only reason why we build up an anxiety about it is because we don't know how long it is going to happen, how long and when are we going to come to the end of this. So this lockdown builds up the anxiety in the head and we get a bit panicky about it. But the truth is, it's about being in the moment. What do I mean by being in a moment? Okay. I just explained a scenario to you of working out the end. But yeah. if you were in the moment, like now, this very moment, if you could just stop for a minute and think, let me be in a moment, you realize there are no threats around you. There are no dangers. You are pretty safe at the moment. Mm -hmm. Now, saying that, I remember a particular situation um, because I put this out on video and it was about half 11 at night. A friend called me up half 11 night, Saturday night, and he said to me, Chris, I need to speak to you. I said, what? He said to me, um, I just saw your video, and I want to know what you mean be in a moment. So I was about to explain to him, and he cut across, but he sounded a bit irritable at the time. And he cut across, and he said to me, um, but when I had an, a panic attack, I was trying to be in the moment, and the moment wasn't good. Yeah. So I totally understood. I really got what he's talking about. Because if I'm saying be in a moment and you're not feeling good at the moment, why do you want to be there? But the moment I'm talking about is the moment on another level. The moment that, hey, nothing's happening. There is nothing happening. There are no threats. It's only the outcomes in my mind ahead of me, which is not in the moment, that is causing this anxiety and this worry. Can, so, can, you, can, you, can you break this into... What, what is happening now? Link it right. with COVID and the, got lots of anxieties going around and lots of people right. are anxious at this present moment, yes. Okay, I'll break that down to that. Look, nobody's really got the answer, have they? And we get filled with a lot of different information. Mm -hmm. And we get filled with all different information that triggers off those horrors. But nobody's got a really solid say, look, all right, if somebody turned around and said to you, it's going to finish at the end of this week and everything goes back to normal. You could probably wait that out. But the fact that you don't know, right, means that a little anxiety starts kicking in. A little bit of anxiety starts kicking in. We don't know when it's going to end. We don't know how it started. We don't know this. We don't know that. But we get bombarded by many different information, different avenues. All right, it's beginning to look a lot brighter now, a little brighter now because we're getting some kind of reasoning on a few things. But every day, we don't know when you're going to open a business. You don't know when you're going to be able to do, well, all right, we know we can exercise now. We know yes. this, we know that. And every place is dealing with it differently. So within this period of COVID, this is why there is that anxiety with an individual. So you've got to, um, let's say, look, be in a moment, find other things to do, occupy yourself, you know, occupy yourself with other things at this time so what we are talking about is occupy your mind as well that's correct that is correct and now now i need to just go back into the world bit about the, the films because when people watch a film sometimes 
Mm -hmm. I sometimes have to say, sometimes to certain people when they're watching a film, I say, they're just actors, really. They're just actors, you know? Because yeah. you watch a film, horror film, or any film, thriller film, and it actually gets your mind going, gets your blood pumping. It does. But do you think it is wrong of me when I say they're just actors? Actually, those are extras, whatever like that. Can, can, can one sort of... You can break that down into present day situations sometimes when some, certain things are real. Well, think about it. So let's go back to the film that you just said. Yes. When you get when your heart starts pumping and everything, you turn around and say, Well, it's just actors. Yes. What are you doing at that moment? You are reassuring yourself to say, Hey, brain, this isn't real. Yes. Don't worry, it's not real. Because if you didn't reassure yourself, hey. <laughs> you know, who knows where we're going to run there, you know, at the end of the day. So you're reassuring yourself. So you know, actually, that this is not real. This is not real. So you've got to keep telling yourself that. Think about it if you didn't tell yourself that and you immerse yourself into what's actually happening. You probably end up a little bit of a wreck if you watch the horror film every night of the week doing that, you know? Now, I'm, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna leave on that point because I want to talk about something about media okay. regarding certain things. But let's bring that when it goes there. And I'm going to make a note here for something. So carry on to your next point here because there's something which you mentioned there which I want to touch okay. on. Yeah. Sure. Right. Okay. Uh, let's say point three. Screens. Screens. Now, this is to do with your your health and your being and also your mental health as well. Screens. And when I talk about screens, I'm talking about this. Look, cut back on the amount of screens that you watch before going to bed. Now, when I say screens and when I say cut back, let's talk about the mobile phone. Yeah. Um, let's talk about the laptop. And we all do it. We're all guilty of it at some point or another. But on these screens, there is what we call a blue screen. Yes. And a blue screen behind that screen that's there is a blue screen. And it omits lights, which yes. go through your eyes, right, right to your brain. But the thing about these lights, and they're called blue screens, is they send messages to you to say, stay alert. It's daylight. So your brain is getting into the place of this is daylight. I need to be awake. Now, if your brain is telling you that and you're just about to go to sleep, now there are about three different levels of sleep. I'm sure mm -hmm. somebody can confirm this with me, right? Because we've got the uh, REM state, like the rapid eye movement. Then we've got the alpha and we've also got the deep state as well. I think got that right the right way around the way, right? The mm -hmm. deep state. Now, if you've been watching that blue screen before you go to bed just before you go to sleep and somebody said to you the next day said oh did you have a good sleep yeah yeah i slept well but i'm telling you something you didn't sleep completely well reason being is because you couldn't get to that deep state you may have got from the rem or yeah. may just stay there next to the let's say the alpha the next bit right but it doesn't it doesn't say that you had a proper deep sleep and when we don't have a deep sleep what do we do? We tend to be a little bit more agitated the next day, a bit more ratty. Now, think about this. Let's equate this to this time of lockdown. If you're in that state of mind the next day, yes, and you already haven't got a plan because you don't know what's going to happen, and we're in lockdown, it's not a good place to be in yeah. your state of mind, right? So answer to that. At least half an hour, 45 minutes before, shut down all those electric blue screens mm. don't watch them you know at that time and i'm saying that but i'll tell you i've been guilty of times where i've just got to oh do this quick i've stopped that now because i know that it does make a difference to having that deep rest of sleep and you have a deep rest of sleep you're more productive the next day okay and it lessens that stress level so what, so, so, what <clears throat> so so ladies and gentlemen make sure you get your your proper sleep and i guess what you're saying actually chris in order to deal with that, the the phone. This is this is the site. This is the thing. What you're saying, the light right. from the screen or whatever will give you the impression that it is still daylight. That is correct. And you keep going on, keep going on. Some people will cover themselves, and it's not me, of course. Cover themselves with their blanket and under their phone, with their phones <laughs> in their hands. There, blue yeah. screen. Because yeah. I, I get up sometimes early in the morning preparing cases sometimes, and and. And what makes it worse now is because by four o'clock, the place is bright. Four thirty, yeah. the place is bright. So you, mm -hmm. you get up already, 
and you find yourself as going through the day just like that. Right. But if, but can you answer me this? But if you de- if you dare lie down to sleep, wabum, you feel the the level of um, sleep which was lacking. You feel the level of sleep that was lacking, and you realize you might feel this kind of tension right there. Even when you sleep, you think, "I've got to sleep. I've got to go to sleep. I've got to go to sleep." Why should you be thinking, "I've got to go to sleep now"? It's soon to be daylight. Shouldn't it just happen naturally? Yes. Yes. Something's been interrupted there. Something has been interrupted there. So we got to be um, aware. Let's say aware. Not telling you do that. This is what you must do. Must do it. Listen. Just an awareness to realize this might be just a part of it. Yes, and that's yes. level in this time. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming on. And uh, hi to Roger, um, Paula, um, Carl Pike. Uh, good, good evening, and how are you? Um, I've got Coach Chris Brown, and we're looking at um, you know mental health factors, but more looking at some of the solutions and some of the things which are very practical around us. Um, and most importantly, this is Mental Health Awareness Week. Everybody's been talking about that, but we talk about domestic violence. People are talking about the, the psychological effect of lockdown and isolation. So Chris is here sort of going through, and what should I say? Breaking it down. Right, Chris? So That's right. We're breaking it down. Breaking it down. Making it to chew. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So so we have, de- we have dealt with physical health and mental health, anxiety, screens, and now we're talking the next one. Couch lounging. Couch lounging. <laughs> what do I mean by couch lounging? Okay. Sorry, this Think is about this, right? Interviews over. <laughs> <It's easy. laughs> <Are> you <good? laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> right, Okay, so no couch lounging, right? Now, yeah. You know, um, we've been in this period where, um, with lockdown, yeah. you know, we know that nobody's going to like turn up at our house unannounced, right? We know that, okay? And similar to what I mentioned when I was saying to you and I showed you a video is this, look, we know nobody's gonna come around our house unannounced. Mm. And whether it be friend, family, or, you know, whoever. And if they do, you know what to do. Nine, 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 you know, because they're two weeks apart, right? But I'm only joking with that. What I'm really saying is this, look, with this time, of knowing that nobody's going to come around announced it does not give you permission to stay in your pjs your pajamas your nighty your lounge and stuff all day yeah. forget the teeth till afternoon it does yeah. not now that may seem strange in the beginning when we were off work and something it might have been a bit of a novelty but listen if you keep doing that this is what happens you start to slip into a negative spiral mm. it gets too comfortable you know and if you haven't got that routine throughout the day get up early you know shower get up change da, 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 brush your teeth, whatever yep you're going to slip down into a spiral we got to pull that back what are we doing we are um regaining our power you know that we're not made up of just saying it's just about work we are not it's the reason why you work there. They chose you for your talent of who you are and your output in building that company. But when that situation gets pulled away, it doesn't mean, look, you know, well, my day starts at 12 or 1 p.m. on this, that, and you have my clothes, then I'll get ready. Look, you know, value you. You have that power. Value you. Get ready. Look good, even just for you, especially family as well husband wife whoever right but look good for you you know value you so don't don't just take it that you know the time just slips on and i'll stay on because one day starts to slip into another and another day slips another and we start to spiral down mentally so value you get up get a spark get ready make things happen yeah, yeah? so what so 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 in breaking that down what you're actually saying chris is that during the period of lockdown and while you may be even working from home and may, while you may be even on a Zoom call, you need to actually get up and set up as if to say you're going to work, as if you're at work, be yes. prepared, be in that position. Poise, I think what you're saying is poise. You know, one, one need to be in that ready and get going, not lay back and lie back and, uh, you know? That's right. That is very right. That is spot on, you know, because if you do do that, it's too easy to slip into it. It's yeah. way too easy. You know, so it's, a, it's keeping, let's say, uh, accountability to yourself for you. Mm. Okay. It's good. Okay. Yeah. Good, good. Right. 
Okay, so we 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 we, we have been sleeping and we're, we're finished sleeping now <laughs> from the coach. <laughs> yeah. You're off that couch now, okay? <laughs> yeah, coach. Oh, yeah, no, that's helpful. And next one now, Chris. All right, let's talk about the media. All right, let's talk about media. Yes. Listen, you know, you could just switch on a TV from the morning or the radio, and you could listen to everything about COVID nineteen throughout the day. All right. But, and remember, we are talking about mental health. And I'm talking about harnessing your power. Mm. Look, you can listen to all the news all day. And let's put it this way. You've got to actually kind of cut back on the amount of information you take on this. Because you're listening to news all day. And then, I don't know if you're what's up or not, you're getting conspiracies, theories, everything. Well, actually, I'm going to come into that. Because that's why I said we'll talk about this in the later part. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, the thing about it is you start to, you know, you're living out a horror then in your mind, back to the same subconscious thing. So suggestion on that is this. Look, I'm not saying do not listen to any news at all. I'm saying it is important to be informed, but to stay there all day, all evening, right up to night, listen to everything about that. You're mm -hmm. going to see what's wits out and you won't have the right information or seep into you negatively instead. So what I'm saying is harness your power, control the amount of news you listen to, and make sure it's from a valid source as well, NHS yeah. Public, uh, WHO, or, you know, just make sure it's some valid source, like some like 5.30 in the evening when the news comes on or so, you know, but 24-7, not a good time, not a good thing for your mental health. Well, you know, when you mentioned about earlier and you talk about the amount of information that goes in right. and, and and I was talking about what I mentioned, it was 5G and the realism, the realism. Remember I, say I was watching the film and then I, right. I, I sort of assured myself and say, actually, they're just actors. It's not real. Mm -hmm. Now, when people are getting these messages, 5G uh, linked to coronavirus, uh, you know, all of these um I would say theories that people cannot prove at the moment in time because conspiracy theories sometimes can be deemed as actually true. <laughs> there are some conspiracy theories which has come out eventually. How do you deal with that bit now? You're bombarded with those information. We're not stopping it yet. We're not stopping it yet. The information is here. So you have been right. bombarded with it. How do you deal with that now? How do you unpack right. that out? Yes. Back, similar to what I was just saying, look, yes. one once you get into it you do it's a bit of a spiral it's a spiral as as you know i do a lot of with um coaching people to let's say pass interviews in that area as well yes and i used to say this thing about go on the internet and search this let me tell you you click one button then you click another button you click one tab you go to another tab you click that you can't even work your way back out of it after a while so yes. i'm not saying if the theories or conspiracies are right or wrong, that I have no authority to say on because there's some things that there's beg to question, beg to question, right? Put my teeth in, yeah. right? There's some things that beg to question at the end of the day. But let's let's get a hold of ourselves and harness your power, right? Your mental power to be able to decipher and be aware of the amount of information you let into your mind, which mm -hmm. seeps into your subconscious and then puts you into a state of fear. Fear and no hope. Fear and no hope leads to, guess what? Mm. A weakened immune system. Believe it or not, a weakened immune system as well. Fear causes that as well. So where does that put you then? <laughs> as a man think, if so, should it be, right? Mm -hmm. So what I'm gonna say is this, look, what you gotta do is harness your power in the amount of information that you let in. You know, I'm not saying if the theories are right or wrong. I'm not mentioning that at all. But what I am saying is you still just got to be very much aware of what you're letting to your mind. You go down one one rabbit hole, it's Alice in Wonderland thing. You know, you go down one, then you go down another tunnel, another tunnel, another tunnel. Before you know, you couldn't even come back out of it. You don't know when that happened, how it happened, or what it's all about. Well, my tip as I'll just stop these um, coming to you is by simply okay. saying to the person, why did you send it to me? Now, I, I because I challenge persons sometimes by doing yeah. so, I challenge them to stop it because I respect the person to certain. I said, "Why did you?" Oh, because it came, so I sent it to you. And then I said, "I don't need any help." 
in sourcing information. I used to do that many years ago without without phones and all those other things. So right. I, I start to be very, 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 very um, vocal now, very abrupt. I say, I don't need help in sourcing information. Because I recall one day, Chris, I was at court. No, remote court, remote court, everything. Back to back mm -hmm. here. And, and I was getting all of these things pinging, pinging in my phone. Right. And, but I could not avoid my phone because clients may be trying to reach me in a certain way. And we use WhatsApp, because everything is remote now. And at, it really got to me to a point. I really felt, um, man, I felt slightly stressed. I don't know what the word is, but I felt like yeah. I didn't felt before. And I had to say to yeah. someone, can you just stop this, please? Stop it, stop it, stop it. Don't send me anything, nothing more. <laughs> yeah. You see that? So, yeah. You took control. Yes. You, you took control. It irritates you that much that you took control. And that is exactly what I mean. You've got to take control of the amount of information. And that very question you said, you asked the person, why did they send you? Chances are, when you ask someone, they always say, well, because someone sent me and I thought it was interesting. Yeah. Did you break it down? Did you realize the effect you were going to send them to somebody yeah. else? Was yeah. it a positive one? Or did you have the answer to it as well when you sent it on? You know, because in the beginning of this, there was some information that was way crazy, yeah. right? And I was thinking, that could actually endanger some people as well. Yes. So we got to take responsibility. Even when you press that, send it on, take responsibility. Um, am I sending this on because it's going to make a difference to somebody else? Can I back up what's on it as well? You know, yes. these sort of things, facts. Hey, I've got nothing wrong with that because you can actually mm. show facts on something. But at the end of the day, you know, um, like we are saying, we were talking, we were talking online about the mobile and everything taking yes. over your life. Yeah. What happens to your time management? What happens to you? Yes. How come you got invaded by all of these different things from yeah. somebody else? Where did your life go? You know, a lady said to me one time, and uh, because, of course, I'm all over social media, and sometimes people believe that I've got to respond right to it. Right. And I was talking to her, and I said to her, this particular thing affected me or this person. And then she said to me, she said, Silver, and I blame you. And I said, what do you mean? I blame you. How did you allow that person to come to that point where they affected you? She said, uh -huh. I blame you. <laughs> uh -huh. You see? Yeah. Exactly. I, yeah. Take you control. See, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. You know, that one question she asked you, how yeah. did it come to the point that they affect you? You allowed them. Yes. You, see? you allowed yeah. them. Yeah. It's like a lot of things we get upset about. We get upset about them. Why? Because we allowed it in. We, yes. we didn't even give permission. They yes. just barged in and we say, all right, now I can't say anything about giving permission because it's there. You know? So, yeah, it's a good point. That's a, that's a good example. So, uh, it, I was sharing something with you where a lady posts something. And I, I'm fine. So I'm looking forward. She posted something to say. Yeah. She said, Facebook is her street and is her community. Okay. When you, when you go onto Messenger and try to contact me on Messenger, you're knocking on my door. If you call me, you're imposing into my front room well, because we are not friends to that point. Well, and if yeah. you video call me, you're trying to get into my bedroom. Wow. And wow. It, it, it is talking about how we allow things to take away. I have people sometimes who just call me. Maybe I had an anonymous friend, don't know the person. They're calling you on video call. And I'm in your messenger. <laughs> you see? You see? <laughs> that you said that woman posted it. You know what I say to that? Look, it's true. It's very true, you know? And, you know, it's kind of invasive that song. If you hear someone, all of a sudden you're getting a video call just like that, you know? Well, you know, and, and then some of us don't mind. It's a choice, you know? Some yeah. people don't mind. At the yeah. end of the day, well, yeah, it is kind of interesting, isn't it? That's that's really good one, actually. That's yeah, really good one. I, I, I was I was fascinated by it, but but yeah, but, that's, that's but it, it's it's all aspect of media whereby, as you say, Chris, uh, coach, is that tons of information overload. It just come in left, right, and center. People, mm. people, okay, people have more time on their hands as well, and they're feeding, and they're feeding, and they're feeding, and they're yeah. eating. Yeah. We've got to be aware of what we actually drink. And when I talk drink, I'm not physically talking about physical drink, right? I'm talking about what we drink 
here. Yes. You know, because it takes over and it's what we put out after as well. And if you really want to, uh, let's say, elevate to another level, you've got to be conscious and have a guard in your mind of how much you actually take in and what you're taking in. Is it yes. conducive? Is it helping? Is it adding? Or is it taking away? Is it yes. stealing part of your life? We got to be very conscious of that, for that sense, you know. And Chris, my yeah. point, to that, my point to that now, we're, we're to wrap up this particular section. Sure. I always ask this question, and I say to the person, "Is it adding value to my life?" Mm. Yes. Is that yeah. information adding value? If I know all of that about five G, is it adding value to my life? Am I able to control that at this moment? So I've got, I, I start to practicalize, and yeah. decide. To say, I'm not interested. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not. Interested. But don't you interested? Uh, you 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 are you are you are you are a political figure. I say I'm not interested. I choose not to be interested. I'm sorry. Right. Do you know you know something, Sybil? Saying that, and you actually taking control. You. Yeah. What this is? This is, and I'll say this to everybody. This is about having confidence and belief in you. You yeah. are the authority on you, apart from God Almighty, right? Mm -hmm. But you are the authority on you in this life in what you take in and what you don't. And you've come to that point of realization that I yeah. don't want to. So I, I don't have to please and please everyone to say, yes, I want this information all the time. You know, you've got to value you at yeah. the end of the day. You know, many times, <clears throat> obviously I'm a coach, right? Yeah. And um, I coach companies, I coach one-to-one -one individuals. And most times with most one-to-one -to -one individuals, we got to look at it that when the issue comes up, really and truly, there's a blueprint behind that of layers of things that have happened that added to that. And there is a lot of information as well that was not needed. So if we went through our basket and say, well, um, I don't need this one. I don't need that one. Um, I need this. We'll realize that there's a lot of mumbo jumbo going in up there at the end of the day that we don't need. And from here on today, it's about valuing yourself you know yeah. hold on to your mental health you know focus on the things that you want to focus on your growth you're developing yeah. who you are within all this this is the good part about uh, this lockdown is find yeah. out who you are ladies and gentlemen you're hearing some serious and positive stuff and some uh i hope you're all on the coach because even though it's a coach but you're, you can also be on this coach because I think you're, you're person. I think I'm on a coach actually. I think, I think maybe, the, thank you. I think this is my, ladies and gentlemen, actually, this is my personal coaching time. I couldn't pay Chris. So I said, come on the show. And then he's giving my, my tip. <laughs> but listen, this, this is what David said. Dr. Dr. Burton said, very good point regarding routine and avoidance of coach lounging. It takes 21 days to develop a bad habit. Wow. Yes. 21 days yes. to develop a bad habit. You know? Um, I'm, I'm glad, David. I'm glad you caught that one as well. Um, I was just to your point of view, and honestly, I take my out to you as well. You know, the whole idea, like you said, the 21 days, three weeks, and we get into something and it becomes a habit. But guess what? I say this to everybody it's also three weeks to make a good habit as well. Yes. Right? So after you've been doing the thing repetitiously after three weeks, a good thing you will keep through something that's going to benefit you. it's just like training like physical training as well three weeks yeah. you know things do things repetitiously wow. you don't always have to think of the bad things you don't always have to think well it's true three weeks to make a habit three weeks to break a habit so make some good ones so ladies and gentlemen for those who are on the live now and are listening um make a note now as to what you're going to change and what you're going to do for 21 days and come back to us Actually, I'm asking, asking you to do that, actually. Absolutely. 21 days to create some good habits. Chris, isn't that part of coaching where you actually say, give them action? Give, give us an action. That, tell us tell, tell us what to do right there. <laughs> okay, well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Yeah. Work out straight away. All right, so now, uh, Silver, I said to you, and I, I think that's absolutely brilliant, Silver, is the 21-day challenge for yourself. Yeah. Right, yeah. a 21 day challenge, and if you can keep it up each and every day of 21 days, you're onto a winner. Now, what I'll say is this look, you've got to work out what you really want because it's no sense doing uh, 21 days because it sounds good. You've yeah. got to work out, as we all say at this time, the why. What do you want why? to get out of it? So, yeah. I've got a piece of paper and I'll write down what I want to achieve within the 21 days, and then. 
I'd seek out all the avenues within this time of what I need to do to build a habit to get into this at the end of the day, right? So 21 day challenge, brilliant, brilliant, Fantastic. do it. Good, good, good. And the next one now, the next one, the final one, next point. Okay, uh, well, funny enough, hang on, we, let's say, let's, do, let's talk about this one. This is really good. For some people who might think it's a little strange and some people think, hey, this is great. But you know what? I started doing this one as well. And what I'll say is this, look, get, if you've got a garden, right? You might say, you might be saying, Chris, but I haven't got a garden, right? But I'm talking about growing a plant, growing things, gardening, planting seeds. Now, there's a little bit of analogy behind this, but this is something that you can do. Now, you might say, yes, that's okay, but I haven't got a garden. But you haven't got an excuse because you can always go to the supermarket and get a grow bag. All right. But my flat isn't big enough to take a grow bag. I didn't put a grow bag there, Chris. Right. Don't worry. There's still no excuse. You can get a little flower pot. All right. Yeah. And what you do is go to the supermarket, get a packet of seeds. Before I say that, don't just pick any seeds. Pick something that you like. Like I said, we're back to the why and purpose. Something that you like. And also, if you look in the back of a packet, it actually says uh, when to actually plant it and when to actually harvest, when it's going to bloom and grow. So you could do something like for seven days or whatever, right? But just nurturing it and taking care of it, especially if you've got children in the house as well. Get them involved in this. This is really good for the mental health. Growing a plant, growing seeds, watching them grow, nurturing, and realizing as well, look, this is God's creation, right? And nothing is stopping it. COVID or whatever, it's growing and it's looking beautiful. Relate to it. You're growing and you're looking beautiful. There is nothing going to stop you. The saying says, and uh, back to, I'm sorry, the name just got me, but let's just say this. How tall does a tree grow? A tree does not stop growing. Yeah. This is you. 21 day challenge. What you're doing is you're growing right planting a seed and watching it grow um once upon a time that wasn't my kind of thing at all you know and it's funny i got introduced to it and i just find it marvelous and i realize the state of mind that it puts you in is a lot better state than when you're just rushing around trying to do this trying to do that true and do that you pass that plant you think hey it's growing it's budding it's looking good hey you relate to it well, you see, okay you see, chris when you mentioned growing the plant when you mentioned yeah. gardening at first I was going to be preparing with. Excuse sorry. me, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, I think we lost a bit of focus here. Yeah. yeah. Okay, there we are. We're back. When you said gardening, I said, yeah, 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 because I've been doing some gardening, cutting the garden and everything. Okay. And you said, growing. I said, oops, I didn't grow anything. I was, just, <laughs> I was just cutting down, you know, cutting down the weeds. And so I said, yeah. And then he said, grow. I said, right. Yes, you're right. I, I will have to get something to grow and put it on. You don't see what Saying that the weeds, um, I myself will go out in the garden and do some cutting. And my father in law mentioned one thing to me a line that I'll never forget. And he said, The weeds will always win. <laughs> right? He said, After he's gone, the weeds will be there and they'll still go. So I got this battle with the weeds and I make sure all the time, same thing, cut them down, you know? <laughs> it's, a bit, it's a bit like the foxes, I must say. And yeah. you know, I've got this thing with the foxes because the foxes are always there and they're always hungry and they're going after something. Mm -hmm. And I saw a fox the other day, and I, I, I videoed him. Then I saw a squirrel came out of a tree. I videoed the squirrel. Then I saw a bird. It was early in the morning. And I said, wow, these guys need to give me rent. I need to charge rent. <laughs> and then someone said, oh, no, Silver, you may need to give them rent because you're in their habitat. That is true. That is so, so true. It is so yeah. true. And I yeah. had to rethink to say that. And they're always going. And, and you mentioned sleep. You don't yeah. see foxes in the day because they're in the back garden there, to the, to the back. They're sleeping in the days because I see them with the children like about 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning sometimes. Right. But they're sleeping in the day as well. And that goes back to the point that you mentioned about getting that sleep. That is. And you think about this. That's really interesting. So because think about this. All species make sure they take that time. And some do it for a certain amount of months where they hibernate. Yes. And you won't see them. And then they come out at the right season. 
We are so intelligent human beings that what we do, we just believe that we're superhuman, we're superman, we're superwoman, and we can keep going. Some people like to actually boast about, well, I've only had two hours of sleep, I'm still going. Do you know what that's doing to you as you age? Do you, do, do you know? Because I think that Fox knows it's important mm. to get that amount of sleep at the end of the day to rejuvenate, to start again. You know, I challenge everybody else as well to just don't take the information I say and say, hey, let me just go with it. Research it yourself. Have a look and see the effects of sleep because people have different times of the day where their energy and their cadence rhythm actually works for them, you know? So you might even find out that, look, maybe I'm a person, if I work, get up and work at four o'clock in the morning, I produce more or, you know, two o'clock or, you know, certain time in the day, different people work on different levels. So that sleep is really important. And I'm, I'm glad you mentioned about those foxes because, you know what? You're right. You're right about paying rent. But the thing is, <laughs> they are actually asking you for the rent now because they're so bold when they see human beings now. They'll just look at you when you walk down the road at nighttime. You know, once upon a time, they'll run. Now they just look at you and think, hey, OK, you're going home. You know, no problem. You know, well, 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 listen, rats, rats. There's a report oh, yeah. that rats are actually evolving metamorphically because no KFC, no McDonald's, no places, no Pizza Express where they get food after. So what they're doing now, they're turning on themselves, eating themselves, cannibalizing. Mm -hmm. So they are changing. This was a story that came out about three weeks ago in okay. the paper. So everything is evolving. At, you know, but anyway, somebody might say, ah, I hate rats. So I'm not going to say that anymore. <laughs> but listen, Chris, <laughs> listen, I want to thank you so much for coming on. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, please, to contact Chris, you'll see the numbers. Is, is 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 email running down there which is chris at coach chris brown dot com with an e and you can also check out his exciting youtube channel and you can get some of the same information here yes. And, uh, yes. and, and the the youtube is and it's coming and you can you can already get it because it's going to be scrolling around here it's to inspire change the number two inspire change space for you is that like wakanda yeah, i like that <laughs> for you. Anyone out there who's struggling with any issues to do with um, what's going on, or other issues as well that they felt they need coaching on, please um, reach out. I'm here to help. Yes, yeah, and 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 uh, just the, the recap. Um, you know what we're talking about. Is there anything good that can come out of lockdown? And what we're seeing here is, and what Chris has sort of emphasized that with the time of lockdown and time that you with your family, capitalize on it whereby you can get to know each other, get to know your children. Because as we mentioned before, people are always running, running, running. Yeah. Thinking that we're superhumans, when even the foxes realize that, hey, I need to chill and sleep and make noise in the night. Ah, you know, the foxes, they make noise in the night, but they need to chill. Um, Chris talks about physical health and mental health. Do some exercise, plan it from behind. From, from before. Don't be like me that tell a doctor, oh, I walked to my car, I walked to the office. She said, no, no, you got a purpose in your mind to do exercise, to walk around the block, or to run, or do something. Chris also talked about anxiety. Anxiety, you know, you know, pressure in the mind about different things around us, and to also take control. Screen, screen times, mobile phones. You go fall asleep in the night, you're not sleeping. What you're doing, they talk about blue screen, which I learned about today. You think it is still daylight because the screen is at you, and you're losing sleep. And that messes up your mind as well, messes up your, your body metabolism. That's correct. That correct? That's correct, yes. Yeah, that is correct. And and also coach Longin, as Dr. Um Burton just mentioned a while ago, it's by these bad habits that come in. You go to work, you get up to work, you always put on your clothes and you go out, but now you're working remotely, you might still be in your PJ, so you might be just chilling, you're lying down and doing your Zoom time because nobody's seeing you. Well, not the Zoom, but maybe remotely, but you need to get up and go. And also he talked about the media. And that's a full one. That's a full one. The media, the power of the media, we're, we're bombarded, bombarded with information, bombarded. But as I discussed in my situation, choose to take control. Take control. You can hear more of this by, by watching the show and, and the replay and gardening. The principle of gardening, what Chris is actually saying is grow something, right? You use gardening. But Chris, could I say even a goldfish? You know, if you get some fishes or so, is that something? Well, that's really ironic. Yes, really ironic. One of my um, part-time hobbies, started really small, is tropical fish. And 
Um, there was a one time when I myself was physically unwell after having an operation many years ago. And I remember um, just sitting there looking at this uh, fish tank. And I'll tell you something, it does have an amazing effect. Mm. Um, tropical fish just sit there watching it, you know. Uh, some people that's not a game, but I'm going to tell you, this will slow things down. This will yeah. put things in line and it makes a big difference. Look it up as well. Yeah. I've tested, proved and seen it. If you can get a, a tank and get it started as a hobby, it's a great yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah, You know, my thing I always say to my wife always says to me, I always say, look, my thing I always say, look, down to a rule. If I had to put out, everybody else says a goldfish tank, not a goldfish tank, a tropical fish tank. In the house, right? At the end of the day, it makes all the difference. And one more thing, Chris, you're bubbly, you're chirpy. A lot of people have died recently, over 34,000. Well, in the UK, we're talking about. Um, what, what's your take on, on this whole thing? I mean, somebody say, oh, he's so happy and chirpy. Have you been just going through this like that? Right. You know, you, know, um, you asked my take. And mm. I'll tell you what my take is. My take on this, when situations come, is my faith. Yes. And I'm saying that outright. It's my faith that has kept me through this. I know for a fact that no matter what happens, and I'll say this to everyone, I'll, I'll put this as a number seven on the tip, your faith. The faith to know that things will not stay like this. It will pass. It will change. Mm -hmm. the, my faith in God, yeah. basically, at the end of the day, that has kept me through this throughout this time. You know, when you know who you are, and what you're about, you don't get so rumpled by every little thing that happens. You know, the sea tosses, the sea turns. You know, the sea tosses, the sea turns. But there's always a calm. And I know as long as he's in control, I'm fine. I'm mm -hmm. fine. Thank you, Chris. That was awesome. Beautiful. You're welcome. Silvon, it's been a real pleasure. And to everybody listening here, I hope this makes a difference for you. I'll be glad to hear um, your tips as well. Fantastic. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much again for joining. Um, Carol, David, um, Carl Pike. Hey, you were, Carl Pike, I think I need you to come on the show as well, but we'll talk about that another time. Um, but yeah, thank you for everyone. And I, I, I personally enjoy this, Chris, I must say, because in a way, um, coaching and all those sort of things and people speaking in their lives, it, it actually spoke into my life as well. And it's, and, it, and it's also personal and very positive, very infectious. And as a gentleman one time said to me, a good friend, Charles Kieran, is like a coach, mentor to me. And he always says, Silburn, oh, Silburn, if only Silburn knows who Silburn is. And that is one of the things that revolutionized my life where I came to the realization, and you said it, you confirmed it. I came to the realization of, of knowing who I am. That's why I don't get affected by so much things now. And people are like, how do you do it? I said, because I know who I am. And it is anchored also in God, in faith in Christ as well, which I'm never an apologist about that. I don't care whether, yeah. whether I'm in politics or not. I say all these things now. I say yeah. them now. So people can always bring it up later. So I say it now that I'm a man that believes in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and I have my principles. So you can, yeah. you can bring it to the back later. 20, in 10 years' time, of course, if I'm in an MP, you can say it. <laughs> I'm putting it on record. <laughs> well, what's more important now? <laughs> All right. And ladies and gentlemen, yeah. And Friday night, I'll have Friday evening at 8 o'clock, I'll have Salmon Baxter. Um, Salmon Baxter from Root to Tip, I'm talking about hair. And Chris and I is going to come back to, to be a student and to listen and to watch to see how we can make our hair much better. And Chris, break. We had planned to do this earlier, you know, oh, we get sweaty. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, good. So, right. yeah, so Friday night with Sal, we're talking about hair, um, natural hair. She's, she's for ladies and stuff like that, but um, I, we learn from that. <laughs> and um, thank you. And remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel. This is going to go up on YouTube after and follow Chris as well. Make sure you follow Chris's details out there and I'll put it up as well. Chris, that's it. That's it. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. That's a wrap. Bye-bye, ladies and gentlemen. Bye-bye. Thank you. Cheers. Okay.